Hi, everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, we have a Q&A section, which you can use. You. And at the end of the presentation, we will take over there. Please, Paul, take over now and start your presentation. Thanks. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. For most people, global warming and climate change are abstract with time scales over many years. This is a video from NASA showing average surface temperatures between 1880 and 2017. The reason I start this talk with a video like this is to emphasize just how powerful images are and how important a role the media industry needs to play in helping the world adapt. This, this industry is all about images. Unfortunately, every one of those images has its cost in terms of energy use and carbon footprint. The media industry is part of the problem, but it can also play a vital role in assuring that we as a society, as a civilization, come together to face this existential threat. I think this video is more eloquent, eloquent than any words I could possibly say. This means that the media industry has a double responsibility. As many of you know, the media industry carbon footprint is increasing every year. Digital media is actually less sustainable than broadcast. Streaming and personalization are great in many ways, but especially for big events, they're very inefficient in terms of energy usage. And on top of that, Television sets may be becoming more energy efficient, but that is offset by the fact that they're also becoming bigger every year. But a cultural change in society is underway, of course, and the media industry is part of it. Acting as a role model, an educator, nudging society towards greater awareness and positive actions by sending out the right messages. But that message can only work, can only be believed if you practice what you preach. To be a credible evangelist, a media company needs to show that they, that they are, too, are truly sustainable. So where does Atos fit into all of this? Sustainability is a core value at Atos. I won't go through all of these milestones you see on the screen here, but this is a journey we started over 12 years ago. And from the beginning, this has been about both values and business. And this business focus is... I'm sure why it has been successful. Anyway, ISO 14001, science-based targets, offsets, wind farms, sequestration, all the buzzwords. We've been doing this since 2008. And I'm also proud to add that a couple of weeks ago, we announced our commitment to be 100% carbon net, net neutral by 2035. All this work is paying off. If we look at the global sustainability rating agencies, Atos has an A from the Carbon Displacement Program Project, 94 out of 100 from the Dow Jones Sustainability Index, 80 from Ecovadis. And you can see the industry averages on the screen there. We do truly stand out. And I'm happy to say that for several years running now, we are officially recognized by the Dow Jones Sustainability Index as the most sustainable company globally in the IT services industry. The title of my session is Making Sustainability a Competitive Advantage. It truly is for us. High ratings are nice, but what is key for us goes well beyond that. For 2020, our CEO has defined decarbonization as one of our top two business priorities, along with cybersecurity. I think you will agree that for an IT company to put decarbonization and sustainability at the same level as cybersecurity is really quite remarkable, probably even unique. And then along came the global pandemic. As we speak, some organizations are radically transforming. Unfortunately, Others are being radically transformed, whether they wanted it or not. Changes that before would, might have taken 10 years have happened literally overnight. We need to make sure that sustainability is a core part of that transformation. 
As you confront this disruption and strive to transform and adapt to this new world, Atos can help make your IT greener. Providing consulting to assess the maturity of your organization's infrastructure and processes, putting in place processes and tech for measuring and reducing your carbon footprint, including audits of data centers and server rooms, as well as assessments of architecture, applications, even code. But another exciting area for our, is IT for green. That is how IT can make you greener. How digital techno technologies can be used to change or replace processes, leading to increased e efficiencies. And for those of you thinking that a lot of this doesn't apply to you, the truth is that media companies are now effectively IT companies, at least from a, uh, at least from a technology perspective. Almost the entire technology stack of a me media company is now, or soon will be, IT-based. Sustainable design principles and development practices can be both more efficient and cheaper. It starts with architecture. Cloud is always more sustainable, right? Well, no, not always. It really depends on the application. It's probably always worth evaluating cloud versus on-prem. On and of course, often cloud will win, but it is definitely not a, a given. I'm sure many of you have seen that high-intensity processes with very large files can often be cheaper and more efficient on-prem or in a private cloud. A good example of where big gains can be made in terms of sustainability is around resilience and redundancy. As technologists, we, are, we sometimes may err on the side of caution. Yes, resilience is absolutely vital, but the right level of resilience. Are five nines always necessary? For a broadcaster, no black screen is truly sacred, sacred. But does that apply to everything? There are many systems that if they were not available for five minutes or for five hours, or maybe even sometimes for five days, it wouldn't really matter all that much. Real-time, near-perfect redundancy is expensive in terms of cost, but also in terms of energy. Each system should have the right level of redundancy and resilience, and this appropriate level will often not be the maximum possible. And not all code is created equal. For example, we work with a small company called GreenSpector that is a tool that analyzes the the level of environmental efficiency of mobile apps. The two graphs on the left are of energy usage before and after optimizing the code. As you can see, the difference really can be huge. Another point is around procurement and commercial issues, where sustainability needs to be a, a core part of the calculation of costs. Procurement departments are waking up to this slowly but usually only in the most obvious and easy factors, single-use plastics, supplier ratings, etc. but not, often not in what are actually the most important factors, such as total lifetime energy savings, but also hardware decommissioning costs. We will often see that the cheapest contracting price is not always the cheapest in terms of long-term total project cost if energy use and sustainability are, are considered. And this is just as, too, as true for internal projects as it is for external ones. All of this can apply to any industry, but of course, there are also media-specific examples. A good case in point is personalization. Of course, we all love personalization. I'm a technology guy, I love personalization too, we all do. But the heavy compute required is extremely energy in intensive compared to just streaming. We need to think, does deep personalization always add to the user experience? Do users really take advantage of it? Are they even using most of it? And where it does make sense, and sometimes, maybe even often it does, do it right find the right level of user segmentation, and where possible, have most of the compute already done, so it doesn't have to be repeated every time. And remember, wherever possible, move metadata, not files. And as we come out of the COVID situation, the new normal for many is working remotely. 
and that includes content production systems, whether they be live or canned. There was already a trend towards radio production from anywhere. That is now here to stay. But social distancing means that as film and series production starts, the on-site part of these productions will need to be much smaller scale, with a lot of work being done remotely. We in the media tech industry are all working hard to provide technology to facilitate this. And the key point here from a sustainability perspective is that in general, compute and streaming are far less energy intensive than travel. And the thing is, for some me media companies, travel actually represents the biggest share of their carbon footprint. What I called uh, earlier IT for green can make a huge difference. There's a good example from one of the bigger content producers in Europe. For every different show, they used to do their own location scouting, sending people all around the world looking for locations. There was no central store of this information, and each time they basically had to start from zero. Now, I'm not saying you should never scout out locations, of course, but this company has become far more disciplined in this. They created an application for sharing location information between shows, which has greatly reduced travel. I, I'm sure some of you can cite similar examples of small, small, really simple things that can make a big difference, both in terms of financial cost, but also sustainability. And I think we can all more or less agree now, virtual meetings do work. I mean, we're today we're in a big event that's totally virtual and hopefully it's working well. And as we have seen these last few months, even virtual brainstorming isn't so bad, which is something most of us wouldn't have believed even just three months ago. Well, clearly not perfect. There's no doubt the teams working virtually are productive, but they're also creative, especially if the team knows each other beforehand and the meetings are prepared properly. This means many parts of the content production uh, workflow, such as planning, but also more creative processes like storyboarding and scripting can be done virtually. Thanks to technology, many parts of the media content supply chain are currently being done re remotely. And I'm sure with a far lower total carbon footprint. As I said, compute, streaming and storage are almost always environmentally cheaper than travel. Many of you will know the Albert Sustainability Production Certi Certification System for measuring the, the carbon footprint of, of media and film and series productions. A lot of productions have been using it for some time now, and it will be really interesting to see the difference between pre and the post COVID numbers. As we've seen, sustainable de uh, design and development can make a huge difference in terms of carbon footprint and costs. In many organizations, there's low hanging fruit in their IT infrastructure, data centers and server rooms. We have seen media organizations with compute centers with power usage efficiencies that are close to five. What that means is that they were using up to four times more energy on lighting and cooling in their server rooms than on actual compute. Measurement is key. One of the basic reasons Atos has been able to achieve what it has achieved in terms of sustainability is due to measurement. Measuring everything we can in a consistent way. This can be a virtuous circle. Measurement helps create awareness and awareness improves measurement because people are more serious about it and can actually see progress. So look at your own organization. Do you really know what you have? Something as simple as what devices and software are actually being used. Is your list of hardware and software assets up to date? We find that customers often don't know. Sustainability needs to be a part of everyone's day job, a part of your organization's everyday business culture from procurement and project initiation through to the end through to end of life device disposal the three r's re reuse reduce recycle but also measure and optimize sustainability is about re responsibility but it is also about efficiency and truly it is good business for all of us
So how can we help you get started on the road to sustainability? Probably the easiest thing and the place to start is with a sustainability IT assessment. Uh, this can be for pure IT, but it can also be uh, for the, the IT-based media parts of your system. I won't go into a lot of detail here, but it is basically made up of these six parts. First, an ambition workshop. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? What do we want to achieve? Then we provide you with a comprehensive self-assessment questionnaire to allow you, both you and we, to get a deeper understanding of your systems and how you work. This is followed by an analysis of validation of this questionnaire. From that, a maturity evalu evaluation leading to a roadmap for your organization. Finally, a consolidated report with recommendations and next steps. This can be an easy way to get a start towards being a more sustainable organization. This is, of course, a paper-based exercise and ho hopefully will be followed up by concrete actions, such as those I was speaking about earlier. This can be on your own or with Atos. But if you choose Atos as your partner, how is this for a radical idea? We can even think about how you might outsource part of your carbon footprint to us. We all know about the impact of IT and digital, and media re represents a significant part of that. Digital represents 10% of the world's electricity and 4% of global greenhouse gas emissions. The move to IP and OTT represent a significant increase in the carbon footprint of the media industry. Media companies must take responsibility for the impact of their digital solutions and their infrastructure. Uh, the media industry is, of course, already mobilizing. For example, there is the DPP, Digital Production Partnership, committed to sustainability program, which we are proud sponsors of. But much, much more can and must be done. We are all a part of the problem. All of us, media companies and tech companies like Atos, have to be part of the solution. As we move into the new normal post-COVID, Atos can help you be more sustainable and more resilient, but also more competitive. Sustainability is important for future generations, but it is also good business for all of us. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Paul. Very inspiring indeed. What you doing here, but just let me ask you a couple of questions. So now No. Um, I lost your audio for a second there, but I think I know what the question was. Um, so, yes, uh, as streaming has uh, gone up during COVID, but the media industry uh, is working to reduce their carbon footprint, it is kind of a, a contradiction. Users part of the uh, carbon footprint has gone up a lot during the, uh, uh, during the pandemic, but the media industry itself in their production systems, in their different uh, uh, IT systems, have made efforts to, redu to reduce uh, their footprint. So we've gained on one side and lost on the other. So what the largest gain is then on the, uh, that people are no more traveling. Well, that also uh, is true for yeah professionals in the, in the IT industry. That's right. Example of where Artis is implementing IT for green. Okay, well, there, I'll give you a couple examples. One, uh, a major broadcaster. Uh, we have uh, produced dashboards of uh, all of the. We we have a very 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 large uh, footprint at that broadcaster, and we have produced. Uh, dashboard showing where all of the uh, um, footprint, all the carbon footprint is uh, for, for everything we do at that broadcaster, what happens to all of the hardware and devices that, uh, that we provide to them, et cetera, et cetera. So an overall sustainability dashboard. Uh, another is a, a major ministry in the UK where um, we've 
we have uh, created a, a kind of a, a partnership around sustainability with the ministry, including dashboards like that as well, but also uh, outreach programs, white papers, guidelines for uh, other uh, for other industries, for other partners, etc. Great. So what internal policies and measures has artists put in place to create a company white culture in favor uh, of sustainability? Okay, I would say that uh, this comes from two directions. On the one hand, there's the top-down push. Um, some of you will have seen uh, Ellie, our CEO, talking earlier, and and green decarbonization is very, very important to Ellie. He pushes this out uh, all the time to all of us. Uh, from the top, we set very ambitious targets. When I talked about the uh, the milestones early on in the talk from 2008, we've been uh, setting targets uh, all that all that time and meeting those targets with a push from above. But also, we uh, try and facilitate. Uh, let's call it a bottom-up green. Uh, for example, we have a, a green network in Atos with well over 2,000 members, uh, staff members, who uh, do all kinds of efforts to, to increase green, to find ways that Atos can be greener within the organization. So it's both bottom-up uh, bottom and top-down. Okay. Indeed, Paul, thank you. And we are real great challenges our society is facing beside on COVID 19, now, isn't it? Yeah. So, all right. Sorry, I, the audio was lost. Can you repeat? So, I just want to thank you again because there oh, are no okay. more. Oh, there comes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much for listening.